in this uh, challenging time at the moment. So if you, if you remember the first two weeks, we've looked at uh, the secret, and it's the power of the secret that actually traps us. Last week, we looked at the... Um, gone blank. La, uh, let go. Let go. Letting go and what it means to let go. So of being able to let go of the, the feelings, the emotion behind the anxiety. And tonight, just a slight different track, but on anxiety... And that is about how do we live as a church with the changing time and the, the current situation? How does this, the church respond to people living with anxiety? See, one of the things, we, something we never talk about, but one of the things about the church is that the church is the gathering. It is the people of God. It's the group of people. It's not a building, it's people. And if, we, if you take one thing out of tonight, that is critical. The church is people. And so the church, how do we live as a church? How do we walk with, carry the people through this time of such what stress? So Galatians, if you've got a Bible, go to Galatians chapter 6 with me, please, as I read this passage for you. So I'm reading from verse 2, and it says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions, then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. So what's this got to do with anxiety? And I would say to you, this has everything to do with the church's response to anxiety. 20 years ago, there, I had a, an incident where in the end, I basically had a breakdown. Now, it's, in that breakdown, for basically two years, I was an absolute mess. And through that time, many years later, I was sitting in a, a renewal group with the man who'd helped me get through that time. And I shared my story in our group, and I shared how the fact that for, the, for basically that two years, just about every day, I would go and sit on his uh, lounge that he had in his office, and some days talk, some days I'd just sit there and cry. And I shared in the group, I said, do you realise that if it wasn't for, his name's Paul Potter, if it wasn't for you, Paul, I wouldn't be here, I'd be dead. Later on, he shared with me privately that he didn't, he just thought he was just sitting with me through what had been an extraordinary time in my life but he didn't realize the impact that he had on my life, literally. See, Paul Potter had lived out these words of Galatians. And there's two parts to these words. The first part, well, the first part, which is really in the, the second part, for each one should carry their own load. There's two Greek words used here, and they both mean different things. So I brought my own backpack with me tonight and uh, my backpack represents my load. So what are the kind of things that should go in my backpack that I'm responsible for personally? Well, I'd like to say the first thing, and I'm using rice as the examples. The first thing I'm responsible for in carrying my own load through this time of anxiety is I'm responsible for my own faith. Throw my faith in my backpack. I'm responsible to develop my own faith. I'm responsible for the faith that I have with God. The second thing, I'm responsible for my own relationship with God. 
I'm responsible to spend my own time with God, reading, studying, talking to God, praying, communicating in that relationship with the Father. That's what I'm responsible for. No one else is responsible for that but me. I'm responsible to develop it. I'm just responsible to keep it alive. I'm responsible to carry that relationship, to carry that faith and to keep that going. I'm also through this time of uh, COVID and everything going on, I'm responsible for my own actions. And I throw that in my backpack as well. And so those things that I carry around in my backpack, I'm actually responsible for those things. So I throw them on my back. And you can see that. There's my backpack. I walk around carrying my own load, my own load of my relationship with God, my own load of my faith with God, my own load of my, the responsibility of my own actions. And it's the same with you. No one is responsible for those things but you. And we need to take those things. We need to take personal responsibility for those relationships and those actions. And this passage, that's what it, the essence of what it's talking about is that each person, we have things we're responsible for. And then it breaks down to another level where it says the wider church, the assembly of God's people, that we are responsible for some things together. Now I'm going to use James and Stephen because they're sitting here with me tonight. And so the wider church, just like I'm responsible for that, Stephen's responsible for his own faith, so is James, so is everyone else watching here tonight. But then that second part of the passage, which Paul describes, where he says, carry each other's burdens. And this is the part where the church, you and I, we as the church, come into play. See, when someone can't carry what's happening in their life themselves, Paul says we are to walk with them. We're to help them carry their knapsack, their backpack, through that moment and through that time. So let me just, I'll go back to my story with Paul Potter. Throughout the time I had with Paul, I was still reading the Bible. I only read one book in two years, which was the book of Job, because it spoke purely to my relationship and where I was at at that moment in time. I still would sit and pray with the Father. We talked together. He talked to me. But what, but what I had been through, the crisis that I had been through, I had worked for an agency where I had spoken up about some a significant a million dollars of misappropriation of money. And I'd lost my job as the one speaking up about what had happened. Now, the thing that really set me off on a path of a downward spiral was when one of my ex-staff came up to me in the street where we lived at Granville and said to me, and asked me point blank, why did you steal the money? Now, at that moment in time, I couldn't prove anything. And the truth took two years to come out. That number one, I hadn't stolen the money, which would have been nice. Would have sent everyone a postcard from Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> I'd go to Rio. Yeah, but I couldn't. Couldn't prove anything. But the crisis that had happened, and this is the crisis, had gone into my backpack. Not being able to prove I was innocent went into my backpack. The build-up of everything that had gone on in that one event just went in and in and in where it got to the point where it had completely overloaded my ability to cope for many people at the moment COVID-19 may be that event for you 
Maybe something else that's happened, I don't know. But for me, oh flop. Okay, this is where you guys come up and help. So for me, I couldn't carry, I still had a relationship going with God, but oh my goodness. But to carry the backpack, mate, this is where you get up. Yep. It was difficult to carry this at that moment. And I sat, as I said earlier, on a lounge with a bloke called Paul Potter, and Paul basically helped me get through that time. Paul actually saying, and Stephen's representing one member of the church, and I want to say, this guy isn't the church. Mm. Every single one of you makes up the church. Mm. Mm. That is critical. Mm. Steve fulfills one, mm. one role in what is the whole body of Christ. And so I couldn't carry my backpack, but along came, yeah, this is where you give me, take some weight off. Oh, okay. No, 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 just help me carry it. Steve helped ease the burden of what I was carrying at that moment or that time. And at this moment, that's how the church is supposed to operate. Mm. It's not supposed to be one person walking alone, suffering or collapsing under the weight of the, what they're going through at this moment. It's a shared collective responsibility to one another that actually helps the weakest get through. Thanks, Steve. Oh, fuck. That's heavy. It's a lot like a video that I've only just watched in the last couple of weeks about a wolf pack. When a wolf pack travels, one of the interesting things about it, you'll have a number of wolves out the front. The wolves out the front, they aren't the strongest wolves. The strongest wolves, you've got the wolves out the front, they are actually the ones that are wounded and broken and that are really weak. They set the pace for the rest of the pack. The ones that come next in the wolf pack traveling, they are the strongest. They're the ones that are there to help protect the front ones and look after them, but also they can turn and defend the rear wolves that are following. The one, so there's first lot, there's a second lot. The third lot of wolves are just the general herd. I don't know if they're called a the herd, but <laughs> that's my word. The red, yeah, pack, thank you. They're the general pack. And the wolf right at the back is actually the leader. It's the strongest wolf of the lot. He brings up the rear to keep carrying the rest of the pack forward together. And you know what? That's what the church is. The church isn't about leaving the broken behind, but it's about actually helping the broken go forward. It's about helping the broken and those who are struggling at this moment with anxiety or with COVID-19. It's about carrying one another as we go forward. It's not one person carrying the whole load on themselves. That's why I shared that first week about the secret, that if no one else knows you're struggling, we can't help you. We've got to talk to one another. We've got to ring one another up and ask that question, are you okay? And you need the courage on the end of that phone to say to someone, no, I'm not. Because that then allows us to actually, as the church, to go, okay, how do we get you through this moment, this time, this season? Because for many of us, just like me 20 years ago, it was a season I went through. Summer, autumn, winter, spring. At that moment, I was in the depth of winter. But you know what? Spring is coming. Mm. And winter season only lasts a season. And then you go through spring and then you come out the other and you fly again. So I want to encourage you tonight. I want to encourage everyone that we need to be the church 
a church that carries one another's burdens, where the weak carry the struggling at this moment and this season. And when we do that, we truly are the body of Jesus Christ. So three, four things you can do. Ring someone up. Ask them, are they okay? At the moment, we're allowed to meet. Catch up. Ring someone. Say, come on, let's go and meet in the park for a coffee. Ring Steve, he'll pay. <laughs> Catch up with people. We were not meant to be alone. God created us for relationship. And at this moment, more than ever, we need people need relationship. And remember, every time you meet someone, ask them, point blank, are you okay? Tonight, let's, let's the Southern, just I don't know who else is watching online, but it's Southern Illawarra Church. Let's be a church that carries one another's burdens. You've got your own responsibility for your own burdens, but let's carry each other. Let's the, weak, let's the strong carry the weak. The strong carry those who are struggling. And everyone has a part to play. We are one church, one body of Christ, one community, and together we can get through this as one faith. I want to thank you for listening to me for the last three weeks. What happened to me 20 years ago, I got through it. One man got me through that moment in time, and that was Paul Potter. I'll be forever grateful for him for that time. And together, we will get through this moment together as well. Let me pray for you. Father, tonight, I want to thank you for the people who are watching. I want to pray that, Father, that you will help them to carry their own load, their own faith, their own relationship with you this night. But Father, I also want to pray that they would know that as the church, those of us who are, who are going well in our faith, in our season at this moment, that we are there to walk with them. They are not alone. We are one church, one body. And that Father, that they are loved as part of that body. Father, my prayer tonight for the strong who are watching, I pray that you'd reach out to people. For those who are struggling, that you would reach out as well. There's no shame in saying I'm doing it tough at the moment. And that Father is the church we would come together, walk with each other, love each other, just as Christ have. And Father, as Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, love one another. Father, may we love one another and carry each other's burdens in this moment, in this season. In Jesus' name, amen.